For Global Medical News Network, this is Miriam Tucker reporting from the 5th Decennial International Conference on Healthcare Associated Infections 2010 in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm with Dr. Angela Hewlett, an infectious disease specialist at the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha. Dr. Hewlett, you studied a new method for fever screening. How does it work? Well, we were interested in finding a new way to screen patients for fever during the H1N1 uh, pandemic at our hospital. And so what we did was we tested a device, it's called an infrared thermal detection system, and it measures your skin temperature using infrared thermography, which actually then you're able to correlate skin temperature with internal body temperature. And the device that we tested is manufactured by a company called Optotherm, it's called mm -hmm. the Thermoscreen. Um, there are several of these devices available, that one was the one that we tested in the study uh, specifically um, because it was a, a kind of an easy device to operate um, and we wanted something that would be uh, easy to operate in a real world setting. And how did you study it in your, in your emergency room setting? Well we were actually looking to enroll some uh, patients with fever in our study and so we thought the best place to study that would be the emergency department especially during the H1N1 pandemic and so we were able to enroll 566 patients and we screened uh, each of those patients for fever as they entered the emergency room and um, then the nurses took the patient's temperature as they normally would um, and then we compared the two temperatures and what we found was that the machine or the ITDS had a very high what we call negative predictive value which means that it was able to um, uh, very accurately exclude patients who did not have fever and for us that's very important um, because that's what uh, uh, that's an important thing in a, for a screening tool is to make sure that you know if a patient is entering a healthcare facility we can exclude them from having fever using this device. And what are the clinical uh, implications of this device beyond the emergency department? Well, there are definitely other implications. In fact, um, you know, especially at hospital entrances, um, long-term care facilities or nursing homes and clinics, this device could be used to actually screen patients for fever. And then you could either, um, if the patient did screen positive for fever, you could ask them some more questions. Um, have they had an influenza-like illness? Some other, other questions to determine whether, number one, whether they should enter the health care facility at all. Um, you could screen either patients and visitors in this way um, and to try to protect patients in the hospital from uh, visitors entering that had an influenza-like illness could also be used in the clinic setting uh, to actually screen patients on entering the clinic and that way you could triage patients and those who were ill could be placed in one area and maybe given masks or isolated and protect those who aren't ill um, from becoming ill um, by entering the clinic and being exposed to other infectious patients. So there are a lot of utility or uh, different uses that, that you can imagine with this, this uh, device. For Global Medical News Network, this is Miriam Tucker reporting.